Today, we're going to see how FSR allows the RX 7900 XT to fly in even the highest alt-wide resolutions. And what does XESS even do for Radeon GPUs? I'm Scott, and you're watching Ultrawide Tech. Today's test will be run on the Sapphire Pulse AMD RX 7900 XT graphics card. This is a well-built, cool and quiet card, and if you'd like to know more about its build quality and how it differs from the reference design, you can check out my raster video here. All games will be tested at their highest FSR quality preset, whether this be called quality or ultra quality depending on the version of FSR that's being used. Later versions changed their naming to be more similar to the way that DLSS is named. So it went from being called Ultra Quality, Quality, Balance, Performance, to Quality, Balance, Performance, Ultra Performance, the same way that DLSS is named. In the benchmarking slides, I will be referring to both FSR Quality and Ultra Quality mode as just Quality mode, for simplicity's sake, since they're really the same setting. Now, we'll be focusing this review mainly on raster plus FSR performance, but we will include some ray tracing plus FSR performance to see some very interesting scaling by FSR. If you have more interest in ray tracing performance, please check out my ray tracing video of the 7900 XT. Now, we will also be looking at XESS performance and the few games that actually support it. We will be testing FSR and XESS performance at four different ultrawide resolutions. Those are 4K ultrawide, 1440p super ultrawide, 1600p ultrawide, and 1440p ultrawide. Let's take a look at our test system setup and then get into some performance graphs. The test system specifications I'll be using today are AMD R7 5800X 3D CPU, Asus Crosshair Hero 7 Wi-Fi, G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 3200CL14, at 32 gigabytes, a Seasonic Prime Titanium 1000 watt power supply, a Samsung SSD 960 Evo 1 terabyte, Windows 11, and using AMD Software Adrenaline Edition 22.12.2. Our first game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where we see that FSR provides some solid scaling, with 4K ultrawide increasing 36%, 1440p super ultrawide 30%, and 1600p ultrawide at 26% and 1440p ultrawide at 25%, moving all but the 4K ultrawide into the next tier of performance, making for a buttery smooth experience at all resolutions. Next up we have Horizon Zero Dawn, which also sees strong scaling with FSR, with 4K ultrawide seeing a 39% performance improvement, 1440p super ultrawide gaining 30%, at 1600p we still see the negative performance scaling versus the super ultrawide resolution, despite a 31% performance improvement and 1440p ultrawide is a solid 27% improvement, pushing every single resolution up into the next performance tier, all in, high refresh rate range or better. Next up, and our first game to also have ray tracing results to examine is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Again, we see some pretty great scaling with our 4K ultrawide coming in at 42% better performance, 1440p super ultrawide getting 33%, and our 1600p and 1440p ultrawides getting 28 and 27% respectively. With almost every resolution at or well above 120Hz, FSR will be exceeding or pushing the limits of what most monitors at these resolutions can even achieve. When we throw in the ray tracing results for scaling reference, we see even better scaling with 4K ultrawide delivering a 51% performance improvement, 1440p super ultrawide a 44% improvement, and both 1600p and 1440p getting 37% more performance. Despite these impressive gains to performance, ray tracing still is only providing just over half of that of raw raster, and nowhere near the FSR results. In Hitman 3, we see strong scaling at 4K ultrawide with 35% performance improvement, but our lower resolutions start to lag behind with our 1440p super ultrawide and the 1600p and 1440p ultrawides delivering 16, 13, and 14% performance improvements respectively. This boost from FSR was able to put our 4K ultrawide and our 1440p super ultrawide in the next performance tier and has 1600p and 1440p resolutions pushing the limits of what refresh rates on these displays can do. Refresh rates in this game are already so high that I wouldn't automatically tell you to turn on FSR, but at 4K ultrawide, it sure is a nice boost, even if no display of that resolution can get close to that refresh rate. 
When we look at the ray tracing results, we see absolutely massive performance gains of 83, 58, 59, and 50% at 4K ultra 1440p super ultra wide, 1600p, and 1440p ultra wide respectively. Despite these pretty insane performance gains, they don't even come close to offsetting the crushing performance loss of turning on ray tracing. Forza Horizon 5 is the first game where our FSR performance truly disappoints. Though it's not surprising, since this game running extreme settings barely improves frame rate from actually using lower resolutions, so simulated resolution lowering with some overhead was never going to impress. Here we see a measly 3% improvement at 4K ultrawide and negative performance scaling at our three lower resolutions of roughly 7%. When we turn on ray tracing, our scaling improves slightly, keeping everything above zero, with 4K ultrawide delivering 5%, and 1440p super ultrawide and 1600p ultrawide flat at 0% scaling, with 1440p ultrawide gaining one whole percentage point. If you actually want to improve performance in this game while keeping stellar visuals, use the high preset and turn ray tracing to extreme, and you'll get 100 FPS at 4K ultrawide, beating out even the 1440p refresh rate at extreme preset with no in-world ray tracing by 19%. The last game in our FSR group we see the brutally demanding Cyberpunk 2077. Again we see gameplay deploying raster rendering techniques that don't scale that well with resolution, providing a fairly disappointing 11% improvement at both 4K ultrawide and 1440p super ultrawide. I would still take it in this game as your frame rate starts low enough that you need all the extra help you can get. 1600p and 1440p ultrawide puts in even more disappointing performance at 6%. Here I think I would keep the extra sharpness of native resolution, as the few extra FPS here I don't think would meaningfully improve your experience. When we turn on the crazy number of ray tracing features this game offers, the story does a 180, and we now see the best scaling yet, with 4K ultrawide delivering an insane 99% performance improvement, and our other lower resolution providing slightly less insane but still amazing, 85%, 80%, and 76% improvements for 1440p super ultrawide, 600p, and 1440p ultrawide respectively. Even with these crazy increases, ray tracing performance is too low on all but 1440p. Consider playing with it all turned on. When we average everything out, even with our poor performers like Forza and Cyberpunk included, we still see a tidy return from FSR. We see 4K ultrawide gaining 28% more performance. 1440p Super Ultrawide gets a 19% return, 1600p Ultrawide gets an extra 16% performance, and finally, 1440p Ultrawide sees a 15% improvement across all games. Even though we see lower scaling at lower resolutions, the frame rate return is pretty consistent with nearly 20 FPS across all resolutions. I don't know many gamers that would turn down an extra 20 FPS. When we compare our raster versus ray tracing scaling, across the board we see ray tracing FSR results scaling much better and much more consistently at lower resolutions when ray tracing is turned on. This tells me that FSR and DLSS are positioned well to become key factors in performance when we move into an era of every game including ray tracing and every pixel incurring the cost of multiple rays. I also tested 4K ultrawide at all performance levels offered by FSR. Here we can see that pretty much all games have very consistent FPS scaling with each additional level of FSR. So if you got 10 FPS from turning on quality mode, you'll get another 10 for stepping down to balanced, and so on and so forth. The only exception is Cyberpunk 2077 where we see what appears to be a specially tweaked version of the ultra performance mode, which I would reclassify as a dear god just please let this game run on my PC mode. And finally let's see what Intel has been up to. Oh. That's unfortunate. Negative scaling across the board in Shadows of the Tomb Raider? Ah, but what about Hitman 3? Oh, just as bad? Hmm. Well, maybe some of the more performant modes will work. Well, let's look. The performance mode provides a 29% improvement. That's good, right? What? It's 6% lower than quality mode on FSR? Well, I suppose everyone should just avoid XCSS unless you're on an Intel card. The evidence is pretty clear, FSR quality is an easy way to increase your frame rate one performance here without sacrificing hardly any visual fidelity, even at our lower resolutions. We also see that there are some newer graphics settings that don't scale well with resolution. We see this in both Cyberpunk and the newly released Extreme settings for Forza Horizon 5. 
Though what one might consider the ultimate graphical setting, ray tracing, scales extremely well with resolution, and therefore FSR. And the more ray tracing settings you turn on, the better the scaling seems to be. With the odd exception, if you're at all unsatisfied with the frame rate you're getting in your game, I would look to FSR quality mode first for that extra performance, before I would lower in-game settings. After that, I'd probably go to high in-game settings before using balanced or performance mode in FSR. And I wouldn't go below medium before completely exhausting FSR's capabilities. Well, that was my performance analysis of FSR using the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any ideas for other Altwide content I could be doing, please leave a comment below. There are links in the description for all the products that we talked about in this video. Thank you and have a great day.